Hello everybody and welcome back to another third edition Batman miniature game. The work on the house has been completed so we can start up doing long form videos again, meaning battle reports rather than just unboxings and such. Thank you for sticking with us. And today we have 350 rep for you of Birds of Prey versus the Batman Who Laughs team. So we've seen the latter before quite a few times, but new team on the table. We'll cover how plants and whatnot work uh, at deployment. Um, unfortunately, the saga of trying to get a copy of the Birds of Prey objective deck in English is continuing, so they will be using a neutral deck besides the character specific cards that are included. Um, but yeah, sorry, just it's it's hard to get them in English. So anyway, let's take a look at the teams and get started. So this is the standard Batman Who Laughs team, so no Gordon in the form of the Commissioner. So just led by the Batman Who Laughs with the Damien Who Laughs and his four Robins Who Laugh. Set up his objective deck is a mixture of neutral cards, Joker cards and Batman cards. And he is equipped with Darkness, so he has a four inch bubble of providing cover. And the Damien Who Laughs has Hunter, which I've forgotten what that does. It stacks with his, uh, his Blood Scent or whatever it's the other rule is he has. I think it's like plus one attack or, or something if a character already is engaged or has already gone on a turn. Actually, I think by default he has one that hits someone who's already gone. This one is also plus one if he's attacking someone who's in base to base with someone, I think, offhand. Anyway, that is all they've got. That is... Uh, how many models? Two, four, six. The <laughs> Birds of Prey have a lot more. So here we have our Birds of Prey crew being led by the new 3rd edition Poison Ivy. We also have Katana. We also have Kite Man, we also have Thug 6 or 5 or something. It's just the one with the dual pistols, mind controlled by Poison Ivy to help out. We have Frank the Plant, and Frank the Plant has the Ancient Roots update, uh, upgrade rather, Ancient Plant upgrade, sorry, which is plus one to every stat, except movement because plants can't move, and Endurance, which gives him plus four instead, as well as the large rule, so it makes him what he is, it makes him larger than average, much more HP and he has a six inch radius for activation rather than four inch which again we're going to cover properly at deployment three plants one of them is ranged two of them are not and yeah that's it so they don't deploy on the table they're it's slightly different how it was in second edition um but again once we know what deployment type we have we can talk about that properly so let's see what we're getting the duel, that's the one that needs free agents, right? Place event marker on the map as shown models with the free agent rank must be deployed within it. Uh, I mean, the Batman who laughs is technically a free agent, he's just leader of his te team, so I guess that makes sense. Only models with the rank of free agent can move within four of this marker. Okay. Makes it hard to place uh, marker, uh, suspect markers, but we'll, we'll, make do, we'll use this corner and the other one just because, again, there's a building in the way in the bottom left corner, but yep, yeah, okay, we'll get things set up for this. So we are deployed, the Batman Who Last team is in the bottom left here, and we're running it that you can start the game within four of that marker that only free agents are allowed within four of, but that does mean they have to get out of there for their turn just to make deployment easy, because otherwise it'd have to be in like a, a giant U shape, and that's just tedious. So anyway, you'll notice uh, the Batman Who Last is slightly forwards because he's a free agent rank, so he can be within four of that marker, same with Katana, but there's only Poison Ivy, Kite Man, and the Thug on this side but there is some pre-game suspect markers and that's because the way plants work is that you get a free suspect marker per plant you're bringing so there's four because it's Frank and the three other little ones they can be placed anywhere it doesn't actually specify that you have to obey the rules for normal suspect markers but um, they have been here to here because just because so there's one there, one there, one there, one there when it's poison ivies or when it's a Birds of Prey's turn to activate, it can choose to spawn a plant touching a suspect marker. And you can also issue audacity markers to plants that are not on the table yet. You remove the suspect marker afterwards, and it's gone. But it doesn't have to use these four. If Katana on her turn, I don't know, if she had a gravel gun, she went up there, placed a marker, that could become a spawn point for a plant as well. So it doesn't have to be the four that are played before the game starts. If plants die, they can come back you need a suspect marker placed for them to be replaced by they have a, a radius of four which they can attack in doesn't have to be base to base is to uh, allow them to like stretch they don't need um, line of sight either they can attack around corners frank has six because of the upgrade the upgrade also gave him tough skin which i think i forgot to mention it's it, sh it should do a lot it's 40 extra rep and 200 funding to bring the ancient plants upgrade uh what else they can have audacity, but all they can really do is attack. They can also use a manipulate, but
but they can only use a manipulate to remove, or sorry, reveal an enemy suspect marker. They can't place a suspect marker, they can't remove a friendly one other than by spawning at it. And I think that's about it. If anything else comes up, we can cover it when it happens. It will be the Batman Who Laughs team going first. Um, we'll go into turn one proper now and see if any pre-turn cards are being played. So in phase one of Battle Round 1 there is one card being played, you can also now see who has Audacity, all four over there, and just who you would expect over here, but a Die Hard is being played on the Birds of Prey side, and Katana is being chosen as the person who has to survive to the end of the turn, which is fairly likely. So that's in play for the Birds of Prey, I did not mean for that to rhyme, but it still is the Batman Who Laughs who's getting first activation. The Damien Who Laughs activated, he moved his 12 to where you can see him, and then did a manipulate to put down a suspect marker that has become a snitch, so that's in play. It's out of this range, so even if plants spawn there is within f or out of four. Although actually, if it was Frank, that might be within four. So just you know, the the idea was to make sure that it, if a plant spawned there, it still wouldn't be within four, and Frank is on a bigger base. So uh, we'll double check that in a second, just in case it does happen. It's in play. It could score three at the end of the turn. That is the benefit of having access to all of the best Batman and Joker cards. Over to Birds of Prey for their first activation. Katana activated and moved up 11, that's 10 plus 1 for being an acrobat, to there, making sure she was away from 4 inches of that particular already placed suspect marker, and placed another one, so that's another potential plant spawn point as well. So worth mentioning, the benefit for having a neutral deck with Birds of Prey is that if the hand they have currently has any or oh, have more suspect markers than your opponent cards, the plants giving you bonus ones that you don't, you're not forced to use, is a massive advantage early on. But it is luck of the draw as well. One of the gaggles of robins who laugh, one of them two that had audacity activated, moved up and has placed a suspect marker using a manip manipulate action. Nothing else to be done. Back over to the birds of prey. Poison Ivy activated with audacity, and she has adaptable, and so does Katana, which was totally forgotten. Adaptable at the start of a round, you choose either plus one attack, plus one defense, or plus two inches movement. Uh, randomized for Katana as a result of having forgotten previously, she got plus one attack. Ivy, however, this turn took the two extra moves, so it puts her at ten because her base is eight. And she just kind of waddled along on her plant over here, didn't do anything with her special this turn. She can do some interesting stuff with special actions, uh, including hypnotizing, but can't do anything yet. So, back over to the Batman Who Laughs. One of the Robins who laughed without Audacity activated and just moved up his 12 inches to where the other one had previously went as well. Just a filler move, trying to force if any plant spawns are going to happen to happen prior to any movements, but we'll see. So one of Ivy's plants did indeed pop up, it was Venomous Plant 2 I think it's called. Popped up on the far side of the suspect marker that had been there, that suspect marker is removed. It doesn't count as a reveal for the enemy, it's a remove as far as I'm aware. And this is a ranged plant. And when I said before about plants having a 4 inch active radius, that's for ones that don't have a ranged attack. Their, their physical attack has a 4 inch bubble around them, or 6 for Frank if he appears. So anyway, this is a medium range spur, mechanical, caustic, fired at the Damien Hulas. His small gives him a plus 1 defense against ranged attacks, which puts him at defense 12, so only the strength die got through. But, because it was mechanical as well, stood still, 1 blood, 1 stun to the Damien Hulas, and we have first blood. The other Robin who laughs without audacity activated came round the corner there with his 12 and then placed a suspect marker because he got a free manipulate from starting within 8 of the Batman who laughs. So that is just there placed in the street and that's it. Kite Man activated and in order to be able to adhere to the rules for deployment of that marker that only free agents are within, he had to move this way because he was back there, and if he moved here, he wasn't within four of the suspect markers to get his free movement bonus from the kite roll, so he had to move there, and he didn't do anything else. The Batman who laughed activated, and he did his full movement from where he started. He stopped just in an inch of the plant because his scythe has reach on it, which in third edition is only one extra inch, not two and he obliterated the venomous plant. He did six blood, only needed five, it is dead. Now, however, that plant can come back, but for the purposes of any objective cards that said, like, remove a model as a casualty, they would still trigger. But the plant can, plants can always come back as long as there's a suspect marker to be replaced, and of course there's always going to be a chance at more suspect markers as long as there's more models to place them. But 
The thing has been removed. Let's say he did it out of compassion for it shooting at Damien. The thug under Ivy's control just moved up and did nothing else. Now that's technically, that's every model for the Birds of Prey on the table, but there is obviously plants that could spawn. Rereading the plant rule, it's ambiguous whether when you get to the point where you could activate a friendly model, you could remove a suspect marker and put a plant down touching it instead, or if during another friendly model's phase, you put a plant down and then the plant is allowed to have a turn. It's The wording is a little weird. I'm not sure which is the intention because if it's the latter then that means that plant that spawned there it should have been spawned during you know like Katana's turn or something and then it's allowed to have a turn of its own. It's, it's a little weird. I'm not sure. It is different to how second edition handled plants. So the, the intended rule in, like understanding I, I don't know I'm not sure that I think it's going to be thrown to the comments on that one uh, which way is the right way either you get to the point of because the rule just says a friendly activation so well let's go over here and I'll read it to you verbatim why not there's one of the there's one of the cards uh, plants are not deployed as usual. Instead, during a friendly model's activation, you may place one of the plants in contact with a friendly suspect marker and then remove that suspect marker. Once placed, the plant is treated as a normal model of your crew. See, the part that was throwing me is during a friendly model's activation, because that means, I guess as written, you're currently activating a friendly model and thus you can't spawn plants if there's no friendly model activation. But it could also just mean the phase at which you can activate a friendly model which means it's not the enemy turn. I, I don't know. I don't know. That one's up in the air. Honestly, I'm not sure. The final Robin Who Laughs activated with Audacity and has just moved up. Uh, wait, no. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. He moved. They all look the same. He moved there and he did nothing else. Now, the more I read that plant rule, the more I think it is that there's like one plant may spawn during one of your allied unit's turns, for lack of a better term. So that means that was done wrong when that one spawned. However, it could have just simply been spawned at the end of Ivy's turn or the end of Katana's turn. It doesn't change what happened, but it will change what's going forward because technically this is the end of the turn now. All of the Batman Who Laughs team is gone. All of the Birds of Prey on the table are currently gone. And presumably that means you can't just opt to say, oh, a plant spawns there now, a plant spawns there now. That makes more sense now that I've thought about it. So that's presumably done. So we're going to call this the end of Battle Round 1 which means that Die Hard scores because Katana lived for two points and the Snitch scored for three. So with that we're into cleanup proper for the first battle round. Uh, the stun on Damien will heal as well. We'll see if there's any post turn cards to score. There's no post turn cards being played so there's nothing else to do except move on to the battle round two and it will be the Birds of Prey who are getting first activation this time around. We'll see who's got Audacity and if any cards are being played in Phase 1 of Battle Round 2 in a second. So no cards being played in Phase 1 of Battle Round 2, so we're jumping straight into first activation for Birds of Prey. And it was the thug with the guns. He had Audacity. He moved over here and he revealed one of his own suspect markers to... I mean, that should technically say it's a remove, right? Because when you do your own suspect marker, it's a remove. But whatever. Reveal one of your suspect markers. It's now loot. The person that... Uh, revealed it, gets the loot so it's now on his person. If he has it at the end of the game, score three. If he dies, someone else can pick it up. If an ally ends with it, that's three points at the end of the game. If an enemy does, no score. Also during his turn, Confusion was played as a resource for two. During a friendly model's activation, you can move another friendly model up to three inches. Kite Man was moved slightly further forwards so that he can be relevant this turn. And, uh, oh, there could have been a spawn of plants. Does there want to be a spawn of plants? No. Not yet. One of the Robins who laughed, the one at the back there who has audacity, uh, he used it, activated, and scarpered into the night. He ran away 12 inches over there so he could place another suspect marker, and yes, place another snitch. So that's another three points potentially at the end of the round, and I don't think anyone's going to get to it, so it'll probably score. But it does mean there's one less body there to help defend the Batman who laughs, so we'll see if it makes a difference. Back over to the Birds of Prey. Kite Man was up, and this is the the weird thing about the the way that you are supposed. Oh, don't know if you're supposed to do plants this way, but that's the new interpretation I have of the rules. Kite Man activated, and so 
a plant spawned, the suspect marker that was there was removed. Frank has popped himself up right there with his 6 inch threat bubble, so if the Batman Who Laughs doesn't move next activation, Frank is going to get him. So then Kite Man moved for his first action and he had audacity, so then he just placed a suspect marker right back down and because the one that spawned Frank is gone, there's no limitation for being within 4 of a friendly. So presumably that's fine. I, I don't know, <laughs> but presumably it's fine. And with that, back over to the other side. So that was quite the turn for the Batman who laughs. He did not want to be within six inches of Frank, so Frank could attack him. So that meant he couldn't really go anywhere around Katana, but that doesn't matter. He went after Ivy, but Ivy used one effort to use Protect Me, so a model within three, four, whichever. Friendly model gets picked as the target instead, so Katana was selected. And, oh, didn't mention, but Ivy and Katana both picked Defense plus one. That put Katana at Defense five, but due to some appalling defense rolls, the Batman who laughs with his double blood scythe got three hits through, which is six blood, and that is exactly how much endurance Katana has, so Katana is gone. Thanks for coming. Feel free to play again. You did nothing in this game. So she is gone, but then some other rules were used. They Won't See Me Coming was played as a resource, which means one of your models, the leader, psychic, or free agent rank, may perform a manipulate action during its activation without spending an action. So normally he wouldn't be able to because his tactical action was a attack. But he's got a free manipulate with that card. So he also has the detective role so he can place or reveal suspect markers within three of him. He's revealing that enemy suspect marker and in turn scoring comb through the evidence. Reveal an enemy suspect marker. You draw an additional objective card, discard one. So that has scored. That's quite the turn. Hope I covered everything clearly there. Poison Eyes V activated and she tried to do her best but did not have a great turn. So first of all she tried to hypnotise the Batman who laughs with her um, her kissing and he does a willpower roll and his willpower can never be reduced because he's a psycho so that's roll three dice because his special is three. He easily passed it so that was her um, special action. Her next action for tactical action because she had audacity so she could do three, uh, two things was to try and attack him and failed, no sorry audacity you can do three what am I talking about. Anyway she tried to attack him and if she had used her special or hadn't used her special action prior, she could have used it on Mortal Kiss, but uh, it wouldn't have made a difference either way because she got one hit through, which was easily defended because he's defense five. So then she failed, did a movement action, and retreated next to Frank for protection. Forgot to mention though, when I was going to call him the Joker, when the Batman who laughs killed Katana, her card was triggered in his turn. When an enemy model removes one of your models as a casualty, target that model and play this card. Choose a friendly model. If that model removes the target enemy as a casualty, score this card. Poison Ivy was selected. So Poison Ivy does manage to kiss the Batman who laughs to death. It will score Katana's card. So that just remains in play for as long as Ivy's in play. But we'll see what happens. The Robin who laughs with Audacity there. Activated. Moved forwards. And this is a little bit of hubris. He went after Frank and attacked him and it did not get through his defense. Now again remember because of the ancient plants upgrade he's plus one tall stat so that's 4-4 four, four for attack defense and he has tough skin etc. And the, you know, the Robin who laughs is 4-4 four, four as well but no he didn't get through so no damage done to Frank who will be the last activation for the Birds of Prey this turn unless a suspect marker somewhere is absorbed and becomes a plant. So Frank activated and the suspect marker behind him has been replaced with the Venomous Spitter again so there is one more activation now for the Birds of Prey. He did his Devourer which is his basic one blood attack on the Robin Who Laughs. It did just one blood but that was enough, I have his card here, to trigger Slow Digestion. After resolving a Devourer attack that inflicts damage, done, remove the target from the gaming area that model is devoured. A devoured model may still be activated each round, but it can only take an endurance roll. If it's successful, place it within two. Uh, if it's not successful, take two blood damage. If Frank is removed as a casualty, place the devoured model within two. Uh, if he's still devoured by the end of the game, it's considered a casualty. So he has just nommed <laughs> this Robin who laughs and is being slowly digested in his stomach. So there is that. He can still activate, and if he tries to get out, he could potentially take two blood damage. One of the two Robins who laugh at the back here without Audacity activated moved 12 to get into base to base with the thug holding the loot and that's it because he doesn't have Audacity he cannot attack but he is in base to base which makes well actually no, the pistols can be fired in close range doesn't can they oh well anyway it's just the venomous plant unless during the venomous plant's turn 
this suspect marker gets devoured to spawn another plant, I guess we'll see. So the Venomous plant activated without Audacity just did an attack action on the Batman Who Laughs and hit him for one, which is one blood, one stun. Although the stun's going to heal at the end of a turn anyway. Um, he was within eight for the... Oh, and cover as well, because he, he gave himself cover bonus as well, so there's one less die. Um, he is within eight of the Batman Who Laughs, barely, because he has stealth. But I just realised he's probably close enough that he's eliminated by that light anyway, so that's irrelevant. But still, he did a bit of damage. No scoring, though. So now the demon who laughs, and that Robin get to do whatever they want to end off the second turn. So for those last two activations, the Robin who laughs has just joined over there to gang up on the thug. And then over here the demon who laughs went right in on Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy used one more effort to make Frank the target, and all said and done, taking Tough Skin into account as well. Frank just took one blood, one stun, and again at the end of the turn the stun is just going to heal. So essentially he took one blood. So that does put us into the end of the turn, that means the snitch, the other snitch, is scoring for the Batman Who Laughs. The other two cards for Birds of Prey are still in effect because Poison Ivy could feasibly still technically kill the Batman Who Laughs. And the thug, although he's surrounded by a gaggle of cannibal robins, he's still holding on to the loot, so we'll see. So at the start of the penultimate turn it will be the Birds of Prey getting first activation again. The survivors on the field are all, well, the ones that need Audacity have it, the Thug, Ivy, Kite Man, and you can see Damien has Audacity, the Batman Who Laughs has Audacity, and the two Robins going after the Thug also have Audacity. There is no objective cards being played, so we're just jumping straight into activations. So Poison Ivy was first up, and Kite Man's objective card was played as a resource for one. An enemy model taking a willpower roll within 4 inches of Kite Man suffers a minus 2 penalty to its willpower. That was used on Damien who laughs, which put him down at willpower 4. She then mind controlled him, or hypnotised him, which in turn, scored, I'm feeling weird, inflict an effect on an enemy model. Hypnotises in the effect section of the compendium, therefore it counts. So that means you immediately get to do two actions with the hypnotised target. Move and attack. Damien attacked his father. Only one hit got through because this... Of me, the strength die because this uh, Batman does not have bat armor. One blood, one stun, not much. Then she did a move action, and then finally a manipulate for her tactical and put down a suspect marker. So that's been used up as a resource, but I'm feeling weird has scored. So the Robin who laughs with audacity there, but it's now been flipped over, attacked the thug holding the loot. One hit got through for one blood, one stun, but because he was within eight, corrupted. One of the Batman Who Laughs unique cards was placed as, played as a resource. A model damaged by an attacker that is within 8 of a friendly Batman Who Laughs suffers the poison effect. Sorry, by an attacker, obviously you're not poisoning the attacker. You're attacking or poisoning the model who was attacked. So anyway, one blood, one stun, and the poison one effect. So if he's still alive at the end of the turn, that could finish him off. So the thug with the loot that had the audacity to survive the attack fired his pistols point blank into the Robin who laughs who hasn't gone yet. Did two blood, two stun. If his weapons were uni damage type, as in like if there was just blood or blood or just stun, would have taken him out. Sadly not. So he retreated back here because this is his best chance to live. He's still poisoned, so he'll take that check at the end of the turn. And the suspect marker here has been replaced with the venomous plant. So that's his best chance because if he went the other way. He couldn't go that way because of the deployment rule, and he couldn't go this way because there's an uh, angry Robin and Batman there, so what can you do? And so perhaps expected, the Robin activated and gave chase. He only got one hit through on the roll though, so that's one blood, one stun from his biting and clawing, which puts him at 2-2 two, two in total, and he's a 4-4. Four, four. So he is still kicking, the loot is still protected, and now that Robin's going to have to face the wrath of the plant, presumably. It was in fact Kite Man who activated, and he came down here, and then he used a tactical action to, or manipulate rather, to place a suspect marker. Simple as that. He, Damien who laughs, activated. He moved over here, he placed a suspect marker, and yes, as you can probably see, it is the third snitch. That is, the luck of the draw has been in effect for both sides, just with opposite, um, whether it's good or bad, because the snitches are pretty easy to score, they're worth a lot. All three have managed to appear, so that's probably going to score at the end of the turn. And for the Birds of Prey, if early on when they had all those free suspect markers, if they'd just drawn the neutral cards for having the most suspect markers on the table, would have been easy scores as well, but they just they weren't in the hand. So the Venomous Plant here has activated and did nothing because it's expended its ammo. So it can't fire at the Batman Who Laughs. That does leave Frank, 
but it's still back over. Oh no, there's the, the venomous plant over there. I totally forgot. Well, we can still go after that anyway. But the Batman who last gets to activate, and that's the last one I think for their side. And then yeah, it'll be the plant over there because Frank can't do anything unless someone walks within six of him, of course. Although that does the the Robin he's devoured that's currently being chewed on. Does he have to try and activate? Or can he simply be content with staying inside there, hoping that maybe the Batman who laughs frees him? I don't know, I, I guess he doesn't have to activate, so he could just hold on, although that does mean he'll count as a death at the end of the game, but we'll see. So the Batman who laughs decided to go after Frank, to try and attack him, see if he could free the Robin trapped within his plant guts, and he rolled spectacularly badly. Now remember, Frank is plus one defense, but still, whiffed, just entirely whiffed. So, no damage done, that does mean Frank is able to attack him back, although he can't devour him because he's, he's full. So, there's still that to do, and then simply that plant attacking that Robin, and that will take us to the end of the penultimate turn. So we are at the end of the penultimate turn, so we're just going to cover everything that happened. This plant was unable to do any damage to the Robin who laughs. The thug failed his willpower roll, sorry, endurance roll, on the poison, so he's taken one damage, he's one blood away from death. The Batman who laughs was attacked by Frank. One damage, got through the strength I got through, so one blood, but nothing else there. No endgame cards being played, but it does mean that the snitch that the Damien who last played scores, so that's another three points in the bag. Those other two are still in play, and yeah, that's it. We're into phase one for the final turn, to see if any cards are getting played there. So no objective cards being played at the top of turn four, but I do want to point out, I don't think that Robin had a turn uh, in turn three. I think it was forgotten that he was there, so he's just going to move up there and say he's in base to base that easily, he gets covered by his 12 inches, um, he can't reach the thug so I, I don't think that'll make a difference to that but just in case it was forgotten about and you can see who has audacity all over here and it will be the um, birds of prey getting first activation again in the final turn. So the thug who is poisoned and attacked on all sides by rabid robin shouting crow he activated, he fired point blank at the Naruto running Robin who he'd wounded prior. He did really well with his roll, all the hits got through, not just the strength die. I think he actually did 4 and 4, but hey, 3 and 3 is enough to say what happened because he had damage on him already. He died, which in turn triggered Dirty Job. It's only one victory point, but every point counts for the Birds of Prey right now because they've not had a good time. So that Robin is dead and gone. Then he did a move action to retreat as far as he can, but the 12 inches, and yeah, they can both catch him. So he's probably not long for this world, but hey, he scored a victory point before dying. So the rabid Robin with audacity chased down the thug. Only got one hit through for one blood, one stun, but that was enough to take him out. So the loot has dropped. It doesn't matter. No ally is going to pick it up, so that's not going to score. It can be discarded. But also, seasoning the mix got triggered. A model with the poison effect is removed as a casualty. It's a Joker card. Rarely seen. But yeah, that's two more victory points for the Batman Who Last team. Back over to the Birds of Prey. So Poison Ivy was the next up, and this is this is real weird, but she has scored her custom card, like the Poison Ivy card, and it is ridiculously complicated and hard to do. It's amazing, it's so bizarre but it's so hard, and it's pure kismet that it happened to work out like this. So anyway, she moved here, and she placed a suspect marker there, which has in turn triggered the scoring condition for regrowth. Have at least three suspect markers within four of the active friendly model. She's the active model, so she put one there. That is just within four. That is just within four. But also, at least one of those markers has to be within four of an enemy. That marker she just placed is barely within four of the Batman who laughs. So, through that ridiculous setup, she scored three points. That should be a four at least. That is, that is so difficult to have happen. That it's just it just happened to be perfect to score right now. But that is ridiculously hard. But hey, that's three points in the book. Can't say that's a bad thing, unless you are the team that's about to go. So the Batman who last activated and he decided to go after Kite Man because no offense to Kite Man, but he's the easiest target, and this probably exemplifies that. He did it just a casual twelve damage to Kite Man there, so Kite Man will not be getting a final turn because he is dead, which in turn has triggered They Must No Pain because he inflicted at least six, in fact he doubled that, for a quick one victory point. So Frank activated and just attacked Batman Who Laughs and got one hit through for one blood. Now looking at all the rest of the people to go, it, the plant up there and the Robin 
it doesn't matter even if they killed each other it's not going to score anything for either side so the only thing that matters is Damien activating and attacking Frank I don't think it's possible for Damien to actually take Frank out but if he does that would free the Robin and the Robin would presumably get a turn and then he might be able to do something like a reveal or something so that will that'll be the last thing we do if he doesn't take Frank out that will be the end of the game if he does take Frank out there will be one more activation after that yeah, Damien who left's just got one hit through for one blood, one stun. Not nearly enough to take Frank out. So that is going to take us into the game. Neither of these cards scored, so Katana's custom one, nope, did not meet the criteria. The loot was taken out of the thug's hands when the thug died, so that did not score. Batman who left's isn't triggering any end of game scoring cards, however. Birds of Prey is. Stick to the plan. One finally got drawn, so two victory points. End phase of a turn, you must have more suspect markers in play. And they do by quite a long way. But also, because the Robin that Frank ate is counted as a casualty now at the end of the turn, Frank's custom card procs a model is removed as a casualty by the slow digestion trait for three. It also could have been played as a resource to force a, a roll mid-turn as well, which is interesting. Now, he probably should have died a lot sooner if, he, if there's a rule in the rulebook that says every model that can activate must. I don't think there is. But either way... He ended the game inside Frank, so he's dead. So that should mean that that triggers. So when it does take us to the end, let's see who's won. So I'm not sure who's taken this one. I think the Batman Who Laughs had just has rather just because of all the snitch cards. But hey, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen playing three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. They took it by one. That was a lot closer than I thought it was, considering the the bad luck that the Birds of Prey were having with the cards drawn. If they'd drawn some of those stick to the plan sooner, they could have pulled out an easy lead, but that's the luck of the draw when you've got an objective uh, deck to deal with. Katana sadly didn't get a chance to do anything. She died protecting Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy didn't do super amounts. Using the plants is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be as well. I'm not sure if... There was a better way to tactically deploy them. Frank is fun, especially if you give him the upgrade. I think without the upgrade, he's, he's too much of a pushover to kill. But this slow digestion thing is also a, a fun little gimmick too. So we'll see Birds of Prey again. Uh, hopefully with a custom objective deck. Fingers crossed for the end of September. But who knows, honestly. It's ridiculous. But yeah, we'll see them in the future against someone else, hopefully. And Katana can be used in Batman Cruise as well. So I'm sure we'll see her do her thing. At some point, because she's got some cool rules. Like she, she's very good at fighting. She just went up against someone who murderized her before she got the chance. She's got faint on her attacks. She can listen to her soul sword to tell her what to do. She's got some neat mechanics we didn't get to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to show your support if you would like to see more. And until next time, that's all for now.